CataractCoach.com. Fake Lydia Glaucoma and Sinekie. A very challenging case managed beautifully. Our guests are here showing us a case with a dense cataract and a small pupil with a lot of Sinekie there. And you can also see, look at the bottom part of the screen here. You can see that there's a gap in that capsular bag. So this is probably liquefaction of lens cortex, which seeped out. That's the phacolytic part. And it's caused a glaucoma, caused all that sneakia, it caused a lot of inflammation. And now you have almost a more gagnine type cataract where the capsular bag is partially empty. And that's what gives that crescent there at the bottom of your screen here. So making a few small entrances here, uh, probably for some iris hooks. Interestingly, making those with just a needle. So that's a very interesting thing to do because you don't need a pair of these. That's one millimeter wide, and these hooks are smaller than that. So I actually like that technique. I've not tried that before with a needle. I usually use the pair of these blade, but I'll try it next time. So now getting the iris hooks in, I like the positioning of five iris hooks as well. That gives you a little more exposure, especially in that sub-incisional space where you're going to make your fake incision. So look how the, with the fake incision, there's a hook on either side. Now it's a little tough to stain the capsule now, and that's why the surgeon here is injecting just a little bit of time and kind of sweeping it or painting it on the anterior lens capsule. And that's because of the viscoelastic. And so now more viscoelastic going inside the eye, and that's a sufficient stain to be able to visualize the rexus. Poking into the lens capsule, not expecting too much liquefied lens cortex because it all leaked out. So flipping that capsule over, and here you may also find the capsule could be more on the fibrotic side, less elastic. And of course, tripan makes it less elastic as well. Important to get a good rexus here. Notice how the rexus is centered over the lens capsule where it should be. That's beautiful. And the rexus is not centered over the nucleus, which has shifted because of loss of the cortex and the epinuclear part. Now you can see how mobile that nucleus is because that capsular bag is partially empty from loss of the liquefied lens cortex. Faco probe going inside the eye here and a chopper as well. And let's see the technique here, buzzing with the phaco probe. Yeah, a nice horizontal chop. Horizontal chop is a good choice here because you're gonna trap that nucleus. And you see, you didn't get a full chop right away. That's okay. Buzzing with the probe again, get that chopper way on the other side, and you may want to just trap the nucleus between the phaco probe and the chopper. You don't want to rely on just the vacuum holding power to hold the nucleus. You want to actually be able to trap that nucleus between the two instruments because you can exert far, far higher pressure. So I like that idea of a groove to really get that probe in deeper. And you can see it was just trapping the nucleus between the two pieces and opposing forces there can be brought together and a very nice technique here. I like it. So I like the idea of grooving a little bit to get a better holding spot for the FACO probe so the chopper can exert a higher force here. And then the name of the game now is just taking your time to remove this. Notice how the pieces also tend to get stuck together in the middle. That central posterior part of the nucleus tends to be the densest, and it can be even be fibrous. Oh, more viscoelastic. Very smart. Extra dispersive viscoelastic. Always a great idea. And then again, you can see just chop, chop, and more chop is going to be the goal here and break this nucleus up. And I like the idea of going to the periphery and debulking it first with small chops because you know that dense central endonucleus is going to be the hardest part to remove and the hardest to chop. So you can debulk it by doing the peripheral chops. Even if they don't fully separate, you can just take your time, chop again, and you'll get them split apart. And again, I like the patience here. Of course, we sped the video up because you know how you guys are. You want a five-minute video, plus or minus, right? So we sped it up. Now, interestingly, look at the capsule bag. Some fibrotic changes, some, some scarring maybe. Also, look at those little sparkly things. Looks like some crystallized proteins. Maybe it's calcium, crystallized protein, something related to that phacolytic um, glaucoma or the liquefaction of all of the lens cortex. So now filling that capsule bag up here. Um, oh, CTR, that's always a good idea. So placing the CTR in manually, nice and easy. I like to get that leading ha uh, part of it and kind of help guide it around, but this is a very good technique. Going all the way in, let's see, get that dunked in the capsule bag. Very nice. So CTR looks like it's, uh, is it placed? Is it, or the one part still in the ace? There you go. Get that last arm up. Now it's in the bag. Here comes the IOL. I 
Get that eye back in primary. There's a single piece monofocal acrylic. Looks good. Get that opened up in the capture bag. We can take the hooks out now. And you may also want to try to remove some more of that lens um, fibrotic material if you can. But if you cannot, it doesn't really make a difference here. This patient's going to have an incredibly um, big transformation in the vision. Here at the end of the case, you see a suture was placed, a little bit of irrigation aspiration to take out the viscoelastic. And I like the idea of the suture too. Beautiful case. I want to commend you. You did a fantastic job. Lucky patient.